Yeah. Hello and welcome to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We're recording this on Sunday morning, February 18th, 2024. I'm Larry Rhodes, or DJ Doubter 5. And as usual, we have our co-host, Wombat, on the line with us. Hello, Wombat. Aim for the eyes. Always. Uh, or do the uh, uh, Three Stooges finger poke. There you go. <laughs> our uh, guest today is Dread Pirate Higgs. Welcome. Nanu, nanu. Nanu, nanu. Uh-huh. Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we'll also talk about religion, religious faith, pastafarianism, God, holy books, and superstition. And if you get the feeling you're the only non-believer in your town, well, you're just not, I guarantee it. Mm-hmm. Here in Knoxville, in the middle of the Bible Belt, we have a group of 1,100 of us. We're the Atheist Society of Knoxville, or ASK. And we'll tell you more about us after the mid-show break, so be sure to stick around. Wombat, what's our topic today? Yo, we got some listener comments, and also, why is it? why does it seem like atheists seem to know the Bible better? than christians that's the leading topic but i don't want here to start fires i'm here to eat noodles <laughs> and who better to lead us through a path of al dante than our own dread pirate higgs for a week indeed our noodly lord who art in a colander el dante be thy noodles thy blood be rum thy sauce be yum with meat as it is with vegetables give us this day our garlic bread and forgive us our cussing as we forgive those who cuss against us Mm. And lead us not into ketoism, but deliver us some carbs. For thine are the meatballs and the noodles and the grog. Never and ever. Rum. 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 <laughs> okay, guys, I've been, uh, since the beginning of like February, I had a board on my wall that I would keep track of, like my weight, my waist. You know, and then additional things like, did I take my proper medications? Did I take my prescription meds? I take like a Corostol pill. Uh, did I work out? And did I eat like a, reg- a a reasonable amount of calories? Just to like make sure like all health wise is good. I also have like a watch like tracks my health. But I also have this new column that I started this year, which is just like my mood. Like, how do I feel when I wake up in the morning? And I give myself a rating from like zero to 10. 10 being the highest, zero being like, oh my gosh, I should probably just stay home today. I'm not in a safe place. I'm going to have to call my mom. (laughs) I have been consistently throughout this entire month, recognizing a fact that when I wake up, I'm just super positive because I've been at tens throughout the entire year, all the way since I've basically started the board. And I've been thinking of like, you know, what about drawbacks? Like, for example, I'm expected to get my car delivered to me. I was hoping I can get delivered on Saturday, but it's going to turn out to be Monday. And I'm like, is that enough to take me down from a 10? It's like, no, because I worked this out. I still found a good deal. Well, what if I had problems at work? It's like, no, problems at work is why I get to go to work. I love solving problems. That's what my whole job's all about. Okay, well, what if someone says something rude to me? It's like, I'm not going to let someone else's comments take me down. I still feel good. And I don't know, like, I just feel good that I have a reasonable control of how I manage my own feelings and emotions that I wish a lot of other people would realize too, that the way how yeah. you feel about things is entirely how in your control. Right. And if, you can't control what happens to you, but you can control how you respond to it. Exactly. And that just fills me up with so much more power. I think if anything, uh, we're going to be talking about a lot of, about religious stuff today, but if you remember that, even if you are religious, I think that could be a form of control for yourself. Because the silliest thing that happens to me when I go to a gym is I'll hear people talk about like, you know, AIs are taking over thing. They're going to take everyone's job and and blah, blah, blah. And then they'll point to me as like, Tyrone, that watch you have is just tracking you down and it's going to have GPS. <laughs> what I'll say back to them is like, well, Jesus will save me. I say that flippantly mm-hmm. because I think they they already know that I'm an atheist, but instead they'll take it literally and be like, well, hallelujah. Yeah. Then they just turn well, around and act like there wasn't a problem at all. I'm just like, wait, AI still out here. <laughs> How did that resolve? The yeah. Problem? Well, they, they point to your watch, but they don't realize they got a, a phone in their pocket. That phone is <laughs> yeah. tracking them every step of the way too. Right, right, right. Like they didn't walk past four surveillance cameras just to get into that building. Right. Mm-hmm. So, you know, and when I was at the uh, Ted talks a couple of years ago, Ooh. Bill Gates was actually a speaker there. And uh, there were protesters outside, you know, this was still in uh, pandemic mode. Mm. Protesters were outside 
protesting, um, you know, Bill Gates and uh, and the fact that uh, he's supposed to have put tracking devices in the vaccines, right? And uh, he's on stage and he, he just kind of quips, uh, what am I going to do with all that information when they got the phones already? You know what I mean? Mm, so, it's very was, true. Uh, pretty humorous. Hey, no. uh, I just have a warning label on my uh, <clears throat> on my TV controller. Ooh, talk to me. What's, What's it say? say? You got to tell us. For rectal use only. Ah. For rectal use only. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. I had to blow up the screen, all the full screen, for re- just to read it. But yeah, this yeah. is my favorite part of the show. I just love checking in on everybody. Dread, it looks like you're back home. No. No? I'm, no, no, no. I'm having, you know, what otherwise might be welcome as a uh, day off. Uh, when I'm up north, 1,300 kilometers from home, I do not like days off. I like to be working. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Well, I mean, in your current environment, is this not more? Is so? This is not your homestead. You're still on duty. No, this is a staff house I'm in right now. Wow. <laughs> it looks so. It looks so comfy. It looks so comfy. Well, it's a house. I mean, it's a and it's a pretty nice place. Okay. <clears throat> but you know, my dog's not here. My wife's not here. You know, that got day. it. Yeah. And for radio listeners. Uh, this is also done on Zoom, so we put it on YouTube. So we do right. have visuals. Right, right, right. We got biz. If you guys want to see us, you're more than welcome to. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Larry, how you been? Oh, fine. Not much going on here. Just working and waiting for spring. Um, daylight savings time starts in less than a month. It's like yeah. the first weekend in or the 6th of uh, March. Oh, so we it's right around the corner. Warm. Yeah, Absolutely. We just need some warm weather to go with it, right? Because it's still yeah. below freezing where I'm at right now, about seven degrees below Celsius. Uh, Larry, yeah. what's your conquest in video games look like? What What are you playing? Oh, um, I've been playing Battlefield 3 and then Battlefield what? 4. Nice. But you'll be happy to know that I finally got uh, Grand Theft Auto and started playing it. I've never played it before. This is the first time through. Wow. So it's a lot of stuff going on in there. <laughs> Amazing. It's very true. A lot, a lot of stuff is going on there. I have, I used to live in California and uh, my last major city that I lived in California was Los Angeles. And I hated it there because there's a point when you, you don't realize it until someone says something and then you see it everywhere, which is everywhere around you is pavement. When you look up, you see cement. When you look down, you see cement. When you look into the distance, you see cement. And you're like, where's the grass? Oh, my gosh. Right. They're, they're, I'm yeah, freaking out. They're playing out. trees, a lot of palm trees. But they're all but, like uh, manufactured places in right. exact spots. They've got a hole that they made in the concrete for the tree to grow. Right. Yeah, it's it's pretty bad. Like if you I've never been greenery, there, but it, from what I understand. So there's a lot of sand. And GTA 5 is concrete. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot and of sand. And it goes sand. on forever. There's a lot of sand, some cactuses, maybe some tumbleweeds. And if you want to see greenery, you have to go to a grocery store into like the the green produce section. And it was driving me nuts. And when I mm-hmm. installed Grand Theft Auto, I got the game for free. I installed it. I put it up from like game, Epic Games, right? Epic Games Store gave it to me. I installed yeah. it. I, I threw up the game. And the first thing that happens once you like finish the tutorial is you're just this black guy standing on the streets of LA. And I'm hearing the same sounds and I'm seeing the same this is. And I'm like, uninstall. I can't do it anymore. Yeah. I'm done. Yeah. And, and if you I get can't. in the car, you know, it's all the same news, you know, about traumatizing um, gangs and, and bloodshed and all, you know, all that stuff. Well, that's yeah. classic America. That's what we, that's why we live here. Anyway, uh, we had a comment at the beginning of the show saying that um, there's why there's some sort of strange occurrence between atheists and the Bible compared to their knowledge of it versus religious people. Larry, would you mind touching on that a little bit? And then, well, maybe- I, 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 I usually go out, uh, I have for a long time, many times go out to parks in the city and Mm -hmm. I'm an old guy. So I sit down and I put up an ask an atheist uh, placard and people walk by that. Yeah. They can sit down and talk to me. Uh, I I've even done it on campus before I'm 73 and I've retired a couple of times. And each time I retired, I didn't work for like a year and a half. And before I started again, so it was a lot of fun to do that and engage people in conversation. And thing, one of the things that struck me was that they don't know the Bible very well. Right. right. Uh, they'll come up and tell me, you know, the most popular uh, verses like Jesus loves you and he wants you to be in heaven or, you know, all this other good stuff that they, their preacher has told them. 
But when I start telling them about what's actually in the Bible, that, uh, you know, Leviticus and Deuteronomy are just full of commandments. It's not just 10 commandments in the Bible. Mm -hmm. And matter of fact, there's more than one set of 10 commandments in the Bible. Yep. That shocks them. But I, one place in uh, in Deuteronomy, it says that if you don't uh, obey these commandments and everything in this book, uh, God will bring you so low that you will have to eat your own children. And they said, that's not in there. And I said, yeah, it's in there. And I have a theory of this as why do atheists know the Bible better than, than uh, believers is that once they know they used to be believers, most I'd say 95% of all atheists used to be believers. And I think that they have studied the Bible so much when they were in believers that they, they came to the point where they understood it's not real and that yeah. it's just a coercive device. If it's lucky. something to keep you in line, yep, make yep. you uh, feel guilty so that you'll sit in the pew and give them money. And um, that's uh, that's my theory on it. Um, so many people, especially people who go to who want to be preachers and go to seminary, mm. they learn this stuff. They know it. They, now, when they come out the other end of seminary, they are either going to be a like a religious scholar and a secular one at that. There's a lot of those out there, or they'll go ahead and be a preacher, knowing the truth and not telling their their congregation. Mm. And so many of those end up in uh, the clergy project, mm, right. uh, which is a good thing, by the way. Yep. Um, yep. Anyway, look up the clergy you know, project. If you know, you the, have leader, any questions. the leader of the the leader of the clergy project is actually a member of the Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster of British Columbia. Yeah. Oh, really? What's his name? Uh, well, I off, off the top of my head, but oh, when he okay. joined, it's whoever the leader is, because he invited okay. me to. Uh, they yeah. were having a. Uh, yeah. A seminar or something you know some gathering in uh, yeah. vancouver for um, people who don't know the uh the clergy project is uh, a group of ex uh, ex preachers who got together you know once they lost their faith and became atheists they realized that they didn't really have a whole lot of saleable skills to be able to leave the priesthood and get into um, secular society and have jobs and all that yeah. so they started a training program Good, for preachers uh, who are stuck in the clergy and don't and can't come out because they would lose their job their family is, their friends which is kind of uh, crazy. once once they find out that they're no longer believers they should go into sales like any pastor there's has a lot there's a lot of uh i mean they're good at writing because they write their uh, own sermons they could become writers or columnists or there you go uh, or you know bloggers for that matter um they're good at administration uh, there are a lot of things that they develop skills for in the priesthood that can be transitioned over to secular. Absolutely. Absolutely. To yeah. something useful, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Rather than like potentially harmful. Dredd, yeah. I have a question for you. Um, do you yeah. think it's more likely for people to be more aware of and more educated about why they don't believe something than to be in any way educated about what they do believe? And what I mean by that is if you have a religious person who very much knows why they aren't Islamic, like a, kiss, a Christian person who's not Islamic or is not a Pasifarian, but cannot at the same level of detail explain why they're a Christian. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, no for sure. I, I think uh, the more you learn about. Yeah, the, the more you learn about religion, clearly, the more. Um, aware you are of the inconsistencies and mm -hmm. uh, contradictions and hypocrisies and all the rest of it mm -hmm. that are in there. Um, and uh, I mean, I've, I've come to the point where I actually uh, honestly pity uh, many people and certainly even my own family members who uh, are devout Christians uh, just, just for their ignorance, you know, essentially. There you go. Uh, the the gullibility. You know, yeah. yeah. The gullibility. Well, they're, they're, exactly. they're victims. I mean, they were, taught from their, they were taught from their earliest childhood that what uh, people believe about Christianity is the truth and never right. allowed really to question it. I think it's interesting because I've heard, so my mom's from the Virgin Islands. Virgin Islands um, has a different cadre of religions, including voodoo. And when you say voodoo around Christians, they were like, oh, my gosh, that is one of the worst of the worst things you could be like a practitioner of voodoo, because voodoo has things like talking animals and witches and, and unexplained and supernatural events. 
and people zombies. coming back from the dead. Yeah, 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 zombies, right? And I'm like, <laughs> well, look at Christianity. Christianity right. has talking uh -huh. animals, talking doves, talking bushes, talking serpents in the very first chapter. It has mm -hmm. people coming back from the dead. It has witches. There's the witch of Ender, 1 Samuel 28. Uh, you got unexplained supernatural events. Jesus literally walks into a party and is like, is that uh, water? Let's turn it to wine. Bam, bam, bam. Who needs fish sandwiches? You got a fish yeah. sandwich. You got a fish. <laughs> like he's literally doing magic in front of people. He Moses literally goes to the Pharaoh and says like, you see this walking stick? I bet you think yeah, this yeah. is just a normal walking stick, don't you? I'm going to throw it on the floor. It's now a snake. Ha ha! Like the whole setup of everything is just magic tricks yeah. that you would get from voodoo. It, but yeah. In the, in the context of, well, that's okay because it's Christianity, I find that to be hypocritical, uh, as Dredd would say, or at least ignorant of the fact that a lot of the reasons why people don't <laughs> like other religions is in the religion that they follow as well. And um, another point of hypocrisy. That's, uh, that's my ahead. side bias, right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, and, and Christians always talk about how bad witchcraft is. <clears throat> but if you think about it, um, prayer is stylized words. Uh, talking to a, a being from another dimension, another you know, otherworldly being, asking them to do the, your bidding in this world—that's yeah. witchcraft, right there. Yeah. Right. Magical uh, thinking. So we talk a lot about head covers. Like when you refer to Islam, you one of the first things people would say from like Christian or like a Western mindset is, "Well, you know, they uh, they uh, what is it? Oppress their women." With head coverings right and the funny turnaround is is like have you never heard of a nun like they <laughs> there's these things in yeah. christianity catholicism called nuns where they have to wear head covers as well it's explained why they have to and uh head covering for christian women is not it's it, it's not a it's actually it's prescribed in the bible you it's know, prescribed cover in the your bible. head <laughs> right but just because we aren't doing it as often because where a lot of us are Protestant in this country doesn't necessarily mean that it wasn't something that was explicitly asked for. So right. it's just a point of ignorance and hypocrisy that guides a lot of people into like why they follow the religion and why they attack religions that aren't theirs. Right. Um, I have an example. When I was in high school, we had a exchange student from Africa. Uh, uh, she came in and she knew how to use the dictionary. Her English wasn't as good as ours, but she knew where almost every word in the dictionary was because she had to use the dictionary. She was very familiar with how that worked. And mm. I remember there was a contest that our teacher, our English teacher did to like help show that she was like, yeah, our English is struggling, but she knows English. And we had like this English test where it's like, find a word in a dictionary, first person it gets, it gets like candy or like a ticket for something. And so like my word was like messenger and I'd have to be like, okay, that starts with an M. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, L, J, K, L, L, M, N. Okay, so it's after L, mm -hmm. and I'm flipping through it, and I'm like, what's the next letter in Messenger? E, A, B, C, D, E. Okay, so I got to go over the E's, and I'm like, I got to do this for every letter. There's too many letters in Messenger. <laughs> Meanwhile, uh, Susan, that was her name, she like literally like thumbs through the book, and then like just flips, turns two pages to the left, Messenger. She knew where almost every letter was. I'm like, how does she know? Where all these letters are is like because she uses the she has not an intuitive understanding of English. She has a technical understanding of English. She mm -hmm. knows how to use the tools to get her the information she wants. She's not just doing it through intuition. And while intuition feels good because it's nice to have that confirmation, it's no substitute for a technical understanding of a subject. And there's a lot of people walking around with intuitive understandings of things that they care very much about, including the religion but it's nowhere near on the same level as a technical understanding. Right. And I think what makes a difference for an atheist compared to like uh, uh, a born a person who was born atheist, never had a chance to have religion versus one who was religious and came out of it is that they develop that technical understanding of knowing true things, understanding false things, having a standard of evidence, realizing what they're being taught isn't accurate. And as Larry, right. as you said, mm -hmm. it's just a bunch <clears throat> of false hope to make you feel yeah. guilty so you can give somebody money. When you have that technical understanding, it's way better than the intuitive one, in my opinion. And that's why you typically have people who are like, not only do they have that technical understanding, but they want to share that technical understanding with other people and be like, hey, listen, this thing that you're practicing, this thing that you're following is harmful. Let me let me educate you. <laughs> yeah. and, and, and what gets me is that they, they listen to the preacher and just blindly follow whatever he says. Like he, he will tell them monthly 
you know, Sunday after Sunday that there's not a single contradiction in the Bible. Right. Although we know for a fact there are. Yeah. Uh, you know, that God is the source of all love and, and, and anti, uh, anti-God is hate or evil. And it says in the Bible that God creates evil, uh, good and evil. It's just one thing after another that if you actually take a look at the Bible with a critical eye, you will right. discover all these things. But most yeah. people don't. And I, I, I've got uh, the skeptics uh, annotated uh, Bible, uh-huh. which is it, it's a fabulous resource. Uh, and it has all the contradictions, all the all the, um, you know, bad things. Violence. That, and Yeah. All the, the violence. And, all the. And, yeah. It's a it's a great resource. Yeah. Skeptics so, annotated Bible. Right. So, that would be my answer for why it seems like atheists know more than Bibles, because they have a technical understanding of that religion yeah. and not an And we used one. to have the the other kind. I mean, we right. used to be believers and we right. used to buy it hook, line and sinker yep. until we learned so much about it that we can no longer support uh, blind belief. And, you know, the yeah. scary thing is sometimes when people leave religion, they go back into it because they value just that intuitive comfort of yeah having something that they feel like they can have confidence in or they share it with another individual that they love mm, and they or, do it for them that i've seen that a lot or they had such a low appreciation of a standard of evidence that they just fell right back into another religion maybe they leave christianity and join a cult maybe they join the cult of jade or a uh, basket weeding or, or just, <laughs> or just go just spiritual <laughs> how many people leave oh, christianity become, and say, i'm not yeah. a christian but i'm spiritual i'm not a whatever christian, that but means I'm spiritual i'm not a christian but i'm a taylor <laughs> swift fan whatever it takes whatever mm-hmm. it takes for some people they need to, some people yeah. need to believe in things they got a whole but it's not a replacement for being right you know like uh for truth for right. evidence critical right. thinking and the cool thing about a technical understanding of religion doesn't necessarily confirm that you're right it just means that you have a good standard of evidence for what you're willing to accept as true and if it is true it doesn't matter how high you raise that standard because true things will pass through it so you might as well have the highest standard possible why lower your standard to come to some belief of something um i got a listener question uh actually have sort of a listener comment i want to go through real quick i don't know if you guys are familiar with the show peppa pig but we've had which Peppa Pig, Peppa Pig. Well, you don't have kids, Dread. <laughs> well, you'd have kids, you have kids, but you don't have to like literal children because it's a really popular franchise called Peppa Pig. It's like a poorly drawn pig who with a British accent. She's very cute. She has a family, uh, okay. and her town is interesting because they're all different animals. And by being different animals, it's sort of coded as different races, but they all work with each other. They even have like uh, gay families as well in the show. It's a show for kids, and there's gay. There's gay couples in the show. There's kids that are raccoons. There's kids that are pandas. And it's like, it's all good. Everybody's here working with each other. We're all happy. We're all working out. And shows are typically like five minutes long. It's like you can throw like 30 of them in this one episode. But basically, um, (laughs) Christians won't let their kids watch Peppa Pig. That's what I've labeled this as. This is from Witches and Otaku, which because we've been talking about witches. But I'm over at my aunt and uncle's friend's place for Bible study, of course. And they're all heavily Christian. Their kids normally sit downstairs to watch TV, and as they were looking for something to watch, they stumbled across Peppa Pig, only for them to freak out because apparently they're not allowed to watch Peppa Pig because there's a gay couple in it. No wonder their kids are bigots. I feel bad for younger children who have to grow up in this environment. Are you guys familiar with any other similar circumstances? Well, I don't don't have a lot of friends that are in similar circumstances, but I have... uh, relations you mm. know aunts uncles cousins who are living in families like that because they follow the religion so closely and they don't sure. um it's just it's shameful that they let that pre predispose their opinions about other people mm. <clears throat> dread do you have a prejudice that... um well i i don't know i mean most of my uh most of my family are all pretty hard well a couple of them are pretty hardcore christians so they uh certainly like to uh, limit their exposure to non-christian stuff as a right. matter of reinforcing the brand right mm, right so right. um yeah yeah no i uh uh and, and unfortunately i have i had to unfollow them on uh facebook because it, just it's annoying. a soapbox they regularly stand on to spout their Christian beliefs and it's just tiresome. 
Yeah, yeah, I can imagine. It's always yeah. good to know that the option exists. I remember when I first heard that like gay couples were a thing when I was in California. I heard it on an NPR broadcast. They're like it was during uh 2004 or 2008, I forgot, but it was a time when legal marriage for gay couples was allowed for like a brief period of time before it had to go to the Supreme Court. And I remember getting out of my my mom's car when she dropped me off at school and I heard, yeah, there's two women that married each other. And I'm like, oh, I didn't know that was a, I didn't know that was one of the options. And then I just went to school, didn't bother me. But like for the rest of my day at school, I was just like books, homework, blah, blah, blah. And then I came back like a couple of months later and people were like, we're angry about those two women that got married. I'm like, wait, that thing that happened so long ago, like what? That didn't change anything. Like, why are you guys even so angry now? But I, if you were set up, <laughs> If you were set up with like a fire starter, somebody who said, no, this is a problem and we need to be upset about it right now, then I can imagine myself freaking out about stuff like that because I was never given an opportunity to just assess that this wasn't a big issue on my own. Larry, what do you think? Yeah, um, I agree. I once I was reading uh, something in school that uh, brought up the fall of Rome. And it didn't really go into any detail, but when I got home, I asked my mom about it. I said, Rome was around for a long time. What made it finally fall? And she said, homosexuality and sin. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's what she was taught. That's how she understood. Right. So what are you going to do? Oh, well, it's right. it's time to take a break. Yeah, sure, We need to do that and come back here in a second. <laughs> this is the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio. 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We'll be right back after this short break. Hello, and welcome back to the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. I'm Dr. Five, and we're on WOZO Radio, 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Let's take just a moment to talk about the Atheist Society of Knoxville. ASK was founded in 2002. We're in our 22nd year now. We have over 1,100 members. We have weekly in-person meetings every Tuesday evening in Knoxville's Old City at Barley's Tap Room and Pizzeria. Uh, look for us inside at the high top tables or if it's pretty weather outside on the deck. You can find us online on Facebook, meetup.com, or just visit the website at knoxvilleatheist.org. By the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, you should still go to Meetup and do a search for an atheist group in your town. Don't find one? Start, Start one. one! Right. Wombat, where do we even put it? Where do we want to pick up? <laughs> We're going through listener comments. This guy, uh, for apparent reasons, wants to be anonymous. Uh, but thank you for reaching out. This is him. His question: Should I lie about being an atheist? Here's his story. I am from an Islamic country, Saudi Arabia. I told my friends that the Quran, the Islam holy book, as he explains, has mistakes, and they decided to cut me off and gave me a phone number of a religious person, hoping he will change my mind. Should I lie and say I'm convinced that I was wrong or just leave them behind? At first, I told myself if they were my real friends, they wouldn't care about my religion or lack thereof. But then I remembered that people here literally being raised to are be, literally being raised to hate atheism. So it's not entirely their fault. It's just how they were raised. What do you think I should do? Dread? Yeah, that's that's a that's a tough question. I mean, <clears throat> particularly in a Muslim dominant country like Saudi Arabia and and the fact that uh, apostasy is punishable by death mm. um you don't want to place yourself in unnecessary danger mm. um so you know it depends on how you know how you know how much danger you feel you are in uh with respect to stating what you truly believe so either you stop associating with people who hold those beliefs um, to spare yourself, uh, you know, unnecessary uh, danger, or you leave the country and, and go somewhere else. Uh, as far as myself, I openly state that I'm a pastafarian, uh, and that gives me all kinds of trouble. But, um, you know, it's just a matter of being true to myself. I'm not going to be killed because I'm not a Christian. Mm. Uh, so I don't have to worry about that. But, mm. um, you know, other people certainly are in circumstances that are much more uh, prone to uh, a retribution or punishment uh, for apostasy. Uh, so yeah, it depends on where you are, man. 
Yeah. So it's almost as if you're putting the safety first. Yeah. Safety first, for sure. Ooh, well said from a paramedic, right? Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Larry, what do you think? Oh, definitely. If you're in a situation where it could be harmful, uh, physically harmful to you or your family, mm. um, I would think twice and three times about coming out of the atheist closet, even though I think that we really need to do so because mm. the more people that come out, the more uh, we, the more we won't be ruled by ghosts from the past or preachers from the past. Remember, the Bible was written by the preachers of those days. And we still live under their strictures. Yep. So we need to come out. We need to let people know that we're no longer believers. But if it if it's something that, like you're a teenager and you want to come out, but it, you know that if you do, your family, family is going to throw you out in the street, don't come out. Your time will come later yep. on yep. when you get a job exactly. and you have your own house. That's yep. when you can come out. Uh, please take it with a, a grain of salt and think about it. Yeah. I also say... You don't have to pick, it's not a one or the other, so all in or all out. You can find uh, more moderate circles of friends to to engage with and confide in. There's online circles that you'll have access to as well as, I assume you have the internet since you contacted. Um, but also, you don't have to be friends with the the friends who would be critical of not accepting the real you. And you can like start to, you can shift your your circles of support towards something that's more comfortable for you until you're in a safer place where you can ultimately come out. Not only that, but I found that uh, universities, school systems tend to be the places where there are luminaries who are exposed to a lot of different new ideas tend to be really, really good at finding and attracting people who have your same mindset. And when I was, before I started college, I didn't realize how many people thought like me or how many options there were to be until I was in a, a place where there's just a lot of different people coming in left and right. And I valued that as part of my upbringing, just being in a place where people cared about critical thinking and working together. You can you can find that too. So if, if you're thinking about careers along with this, I'd recommend uh, something in the sciences. And that might even be your ticket to get out of Saudi Arabia and maybe get a postdoc in somewhere a bit more lenient in maybe in Europe or America or wherever. Absolutely. Going, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> okay here's the next one larry i'm i'm i want everyone's eyes on larry if you're watching the show i you cannot roll <laughs> your eyes larry are you sure about this you're not going to roll your eyes when i ask this question you ready for this one all right <clears throat> what is the point of life if you don't believe no. <laughs> i didn't roll I my eyes you did, you did you did you did, <laughs> you did. <laughs> i saw it it was a little bit that's the, uh, that's okay. the comment. That's the well, comment. So, Larry, going ahead. Would you like to? Would well, you like to go it's, it? your purpose in life is a roll your own type of thing. That's you come up with your own <laughs> purpose of life. You can, uh, and you can change it as often as you want to. Um, life is full of different things that you can um, prioritize or not. Um, and like, if you're a kid, of course, education would be your your highest priority. Learning. And building your, keeping your body healthy and, and it's strong. Um, once you get into middle age, you know, you want to maybe prioritize your career or not. It's up to you. You may want to be an explorer. You may want to be someone who just walks the earth. It's up to you. Don't let anybody else dictate what you need to do with your life. Mm, yeah. Well said. Well said. Especially <laughs> at church. Well, you know, and, and, uh, Uh oh, dread is paused. He's more likely going to go through the yeah. same system. Yeah, but he... I agree. You know, man, how much would it suck to be put in a? I don't know why it's appealing for for people to think that they have an agenda and a destiny pre-written for them as soon as they start breathing. Right? I can't imagine. Like, no one loves being told what to do. Like, if you <laughs> if you go and say like, "Hey, your bedtime's at ten thirty-five tonight." And you're going to eat one potato for breakfast and you're going to eat McDonald's. For lunch. <laughs> it's like, hey, don't tell me what to do. I want to do it. And it's like, no, when you drive to work, you're going to make you're going to go at this limitation speed and you're going to make a turn signal at this point. It's like, stop telling me what to do. It's like, well, that's what you assume God is doing for you right now, that he had yeah. the whole script. And you're but going when it's actually a preacher, when it's actually when, a preacher, when it's what? actually the clergy 
because what? they want you to do things that benefit them. Yes, yes. And whatever happened to freedom? Like whatever happened to be able to decide your own path? Like every movie that has like an encouraging young plucky underdog character that we all root for is about someone trying to set their own path, set their own destinies and then like, and come to some sort of uh, validation on their own terms. That's the world that we live in right now. We can figure right. out our own purpose. We can figure out our yeah. own vocations, our own hobbies, the things that we love, the people that we love we, or yeah, not love. You can do whatever you want. It's the greatest mm -hmm. thing ever. It's it's reality. Mm -hmm. and, right. Yeah, remember, you don't have to be an actual slave to be a mental slave. Mm -hmm. I mean, if people can control your mind, then they can eventually control your body. Not all chains your... are physical, Larry, is what we would say. That's right. Yeah. Yes, indeed. So it's really important for people to realize that when you are in control of your own path, your own agenda, now, yes, there comes a, a, a consequence with that, which is accountability. You're now responsible for the bad things that might happen to you or the bad things that you might cause, but you're also responsible for the good things too. If you won that football game because you trained, you don't have to thank God for it. That's you. You trained. You figured that out. Good job. Yeah. Good job, McCombs. Well, you won another Super Bowl. Uh, trophy. It's like, hey, yeah. you didn't have to kiss him and be like, oh, God gave us. It's like, no, we yeah. know who trained you. They got paid a lot of money too. But uh, I think one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen was there was um, a, a soccer game. Uh, uh, football with your feet, Dredd. I'm just helping you out. So I, uh, <laughs> for Canadians, I don't know if you have soccer up there, but they have a, a a soccer game penalty kickoff session where there's five goals that they have to kick on both sides, and then whoever blocks the, the whichever goalie blocks the most hits, um, that that team wins. And a block a goalie blocked more or less every single hit. He was so happy. He ran to his team and his team was running up to him and he's like, no, 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 no. I don't want to hug you. I don't want to jump on you. I want to hug that guy, the coach that helped them learn how to be a good defensive goalie. And they hugged each other. I'm like, this guy knows who helped him. He didn't was, he didn't like, yeah, thank you, God. Thank you, God. I got this. That's, that's God looking down on me. He was like, no, I'm going to yeah. help. I'm going to thank the guy who actually spent some time to train me after work. And when his did his interviews, he's like, that guy trained me how to do that. I'm like, this guy's cool. Uh, but yeah, you have control of your destiny. You also are accountable for your own actions. They come hand in hand, but that also means you get to own your own successes and your own feelings, or at least you have the responsibility to do so. Dread, you had uh, blocked out. I wanted to get your feedback. What do you think of the idea of um, what's the point of living if you don't believe? I think that's what was the main question. Yeah. What is the point of life if you don't believe, Dread? Well, yeah, again, uh, I think the larger you expand your circle, the more world comes in, right? When when your life is limited to a book or a belief, um, you have circumscribed your world in a very small space. Um, and and that's you know part and parcel to what we were talking about with respect to learning about the Bible. The more you learn about the Bible, the, the more you enlarge your understanding and the more you enlarge your understanding, more of the world is included in your, in your thinking and the less dependent you are on, you know, these small things for meaning in your life. Right. Mm, mm. Uh, that's kind of the way I look at it. I mean, you know, you just, I mean, people stop learning, you know, they read the Bible and they say, okay, I, that's the answer. I found it. That's all there is to it. And they stop thinking. And they and stop, stop thinking. Running. Yeah. On the flip oh, side, though, Dredd. The, the sun is just peaking. It's beautiful. It's, mm -hmm. beautiful. it's yeah. always nice seeing the sun rises on your video feeds. Yeah. Dredd, yeah. on the flip side, though, could you, and I'm I'm devil's advocate here, could you not say that, well, what if my point is I don't want to learn, I just want to be comfort in, in the shadow of God for my entire life? And what's, what's and it bother you? Like How does that, that bother you? Like I said, I've got, uh, I got a family member who uh, he, he made this post um, mm -hmm. on Facebook, and I've got it up here. Uh, and so I, I posted in his comments there, I posted a picture of uh, uh, a Jesus doll, and it was Jesus in streetwear. Yeah. Yeah, just just a little comedy, right? And, mm -hmm. uh, and he writes, and he puts in a thing here, he says, blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say, all kinds of evil against you because of me. I was like, how is that even appropriate? I mean, come on. <laughs> right. It's just, 
the people are just so silly about this thing, right? right they just right, take right, right, them right. so seriously mm. that uh, they, there's no room for any anything that uh, makes a counterpoint to what they have to say. They're just not interested. Right. And it's it's sad. It's really mm. sad. Larry, do you have a comment? Okay. No, it's Let just. It. I mean, I mean, I guess a person could choose uh, religion as their purpose if they do it themselves and say, "I know, like I said, I I realize that the contradictions in the Bible. I I realize that there are other religions. There may be other gods, but I choose to follow this one just for comfort or because I want to fit yes. in with my friends or my and family. I mean, you choose your own purpose, but realize who it's benefiting. Right. I mean, if you yeah. do it because you want comfort. That's fine. I mean, yep. I, I don't and, think I would want to give up my mental individuality just for comfort, but some people yeah. are. But the yeah. other arm that comes with that is your actions have consequences, whether you choose to recognize that or not. You can take a world philosophy where you're like, my actions only belong to my God and that's it. Right. And I don't have to care about anybody and, else. You could have that mindset, but your actions do right. affect other people, whether you see it or not. Right. It's, especially yeah. if you have children. I mean, are you going to yes. take responsibility for sending them off in this direction? Yeah. Uh, and taking away their purpose, yep. their choice of purpose. Yeah. I mean, think about it. Let's go back to like <laughs> COVID, where it's like, or even voting for your voting for your leadership, yes. voting for your political masters, right? Right. Or mm -hmm. Supreme Court justices. Uh, you know, yeah, religion has that effect. Or having the decency to just wash your hands and stay away from people if you're sick or don't come to work if you're right. coughing and diseased with yeah. COVID or even yeah, wearing a face mask. Right. God forbid, wear a face mask so that you don't get other people infected. Like right. there are some really basic things that you could do when you live in a society with other people that may not think the same way that you think. You know, like we come up with rules of conduct to right. make our <clears throat> quality of lives collectively better. And it's not it's it's not a right to harm other people unnecessarily it's like in fact a duty and an obligation to reduce that need to reduce that needless harm as much as you can if you're going to live in a society that cares about quality of life i also feel like um a good example of this is you know we like to think of ourselves as like independent islands but we in fact are not like i dreads life affects my life my life affects larry's life larry his actions his legacy will affect yep. me as well we're basically sharing a kiddie pool. <laughs> All three of us mm -hmm. are sitting in a kiddie pool with more or less everybody don't else around it. the world, right? Exactly. Dread, don't steal my thunder. I was saying like, <laughs> what if a guy came in and he's like, you know what? I don't feel like getting up and using the bathroom. I'm just going to pee right here. And we're like, <laughs> why are you doing? It's like, well, my religious belief is that I could pee wherever I want. It's like, you are affecting everybody even if you are convinced that you're not, yeah. your actions are hurting everybody. And we, we collectively don't want you to pee in this kiddie pool. That's what we're saying to people who have that low standard of evidence. You're holding all of us back scientifically, right. societally, ethically. Es especially like, oh, when you vote yeah. people like that into office. Politically, and, yes. And <clears throat> who have the power to uh, hold people back in, in their beliefs and their and the science and in, in, in education. You know, yeah, by lack program, of funding. There's a, yeah, yeah with the program, there's a higher quality of life for you to get to. <clears throat> and you can find a point, a higher degree of point in that, but you can at least not affect us. If you want to just go to the bathroom and then come back in the city pool and just sit by yourself, you could do that. But don't make our lives collectively worse. You know, like pick your actions wisely and understand that your actions have consequences on other people, whether you choose to recognize them or not. And one of my points of life is to be aware of that, take responsibility for it, and try to leave this world in a way that's better than where I entered it. Like that collective effort, I feel like is worthwhile to me, is rewarding to me. It's one of the reasons why I keep giving myself tens in the morning, because I just love being able to contribute to that. Um, any other comments before we get to the next one? Okay. All right. This one is a rant. My neighbors have seven children so far. Speaking of affecting other people without realizing it. So um, I'm sorry for this rant. I'm just angry. Um, we basically, they live in a beautiful home that uh, this couple lives in a beautiful home that they're ready to retire in. However, their neighbors are now up to seven kids with the oldest being 10 years old. They're only in their mid thirties. And so plenty of the childbearing years are still left. Uh, this couple only has two kids, which are both already grown and they've already get, uh, are already preparing to move out. They're hoping to live in peace in their in their current neighborhood and in that same dream home into their retirement however their neighbors are making so much noise 
uh, and they make enough money because their kids go to a private Catholic school. They just don't understand why religiously they are so invested in making so many kids. They're they're thinking about things like, doesn't it seem a little selfish? It's a drain on our system. And their carbon footprint as a family is ridiculous. I realize that it's a religious thing for them, but I just don't get it. How is that any kind of life? How can you say, go out to dinner as a family? Go to a movie? Go to Disney? I guess you just don't. It's just one more thing about religion that makes me angry. My husband has a band and wants to play live music. Maybe he should start playing satanic stuff. <laughs> That's an idea. So... The idea that, like, you know, even in your own home, if you think you are not affecting anyone, just the virtue of the fact that you're making so many kids, making so much waste, you know, and um, he says using so wife, much resources from the society. Right. He says his wife always looks exhausted. The husband doesn't look like she or doesn't like her talking to any of the neighbors and keeps her <laughs> isolated from us. Um, it's it's things that happen, man. It, and this is a this, machine. it's a machine. You know, like, is that wife living up to her purpose? Was that the purpose that, you know, she, she could have reached out to? Or what's the one given to her by religion? Is the husband being a good husband? You know, like, uh, it's a situation. No comments on that one beyond that? Okay. How do you respond to theists asking for prayer? This question comes from Ishua 747 about 13 weeks ago. A friend of mine wanted to ask this question on their behalf, that person's religious. How do you respond when a theist genuinely requests prayer while in a state of crisis? Take, for example, someone who requests prayer for a special needs child because some medical complications have arisen. How do you provide comfort in a situation like that without detracting from the person who is actually in need of some level of support and while not lying and telling them that you will pray for them? Larry, what do you think? Well, if they're actually in need of some kind of support, give it to them. But I, I mean, actual support. Say, I don't pray. I don't believe in prayer. I don't think it does any good. What can I do to help? That's a good. What point. physical thing can I do to help you? Mm. Uh, and that will go a lot farther than a prayer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shows I, better commitment. I, I bring a, I bring a spaghetti dinner. That's okay. <laughs> I mean, that helps. That's more helpful than a prayer, honestly. Yeah. Give yeah. Me carbs. Yeah, I'd get some linguine, but like, honestly, like to show commitment yeah. and be like, hey, listen, yeah. I don't pray. I'm being honest with you, but tell me what mm -hmm. I can actually do. Tell yeah, me what I can do. Thoughts and about. prayers. Yeah. Do not help. Yeah. Like, is this a place where I can <clears> donate <throat> money to? Do you need time? Do you need a babysitter? Do you need a break? Uh, do you want us like just go out and have like a good time with the kid? Like raise the spirits up? Like, yeah. can I make something <clears throat> for the kid? Yeah. Like, we can figure out something that's actual rather than spiritual, you know? Um, and I, I like that idea. looks like dreads frozen up again, poor connection guy, but it's all good. How about one last question before we go into this? How do you feel about banned books? Open-ended question. Larry, what do you think? Well, I, I think in the market of ideas, no books should be banned. Mm. Uh, they may come with warning labels or whatever. I mean, if it's a really harsh topic, like, uh, Marquis de Sade's books, you know, that I wouldn't recommend that for, for younger children. But <clears throat> uh, there are age-appropriate books. There are um, adult-type books. Uh, but nothing should be out of the marketplace. I mean, mm. and once you start, uh, um, what is it, uh, banning ideas, which yeah. is basically what you're doing when banning books is you're banning ideas. Mm. Um, then the people who uh, what would defend those or even uh, work against them, uh, the conversation doesn't happen. And we need those conversations. Yeah, I would say in a public space, no, no ideas or books should be banned. But in a private space, you can set the terms for however you want. So like right. if Amazon doesn't want to sell mm -hmm. a book that yeah. involves green peas, you know, like if Amazon's mm -hmm. like, we just don't like books about green peas. They have a right based on their terms of service to say our marketplace is closed against books of X, Y, Z. And I would be upset if something came in and said, no, you have to do green peas. It's like, no, we're a bit, we're a private company. Don't tell us what to do. Mm -hmm. Like I can respect that as well. Uh, yeah. What do you, Larry, I saw you raise your hand. And, that, and that's where religion really comes, it really gets my goat. They <laughs> tend to whatever their religious beliefs are fine have them you know control your home that's you know raise your children the way you want to 
Mm-hmm. You have no right to raise other people's children right. or take away books from other people's families. Correct. It is, it is not your right. Right. You need to uh, curb it. Yeah. Dred, we're talking about like, how do you feel about banned books? That was the open-ended question. Uh, oh. The idea is uh, Larry had mentioned that he doesn't want anything to be, any books or ideas to be banned. I, I want to see if we share the same level of nuance that in a public format, yes, there shouldn't be anything banned ideas or or book or media wise from a public forum. Mm-hmm. However, from a private forums like private private marketplaces or or stores, they get to control what they want to sell and what they want to showcase because that's right. their right as a private institution, and they shouldn't be forced to do something uh, aside from that. In the same way that Christians can't force people who aren't Christian to have their express their religious views. We can't force private institutions to sell ideas that they don't want to sell. Like I can respect that Liberty as well. And so it's good. It's a good idea for us to not confuse the two because it's still the same. We're still saying freedoms of the public, but you're not forcing people to, 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 to do something if they, if they are acting or holding a private institution, that's, that's their right as a private body or state. Um, I, what do you think about that, Dred? And do, what do you think about the idea of books being banned? Well, you know, I suppose if if um, an institution is getting public funding, mm-hmm. then they can't reserve the right to limit, um, you know, the expression of ideas or beliefs. Uh, with respect to banned books, I think the backfire effect actually comes into effect uh, more regularly yep because uh, you know people say a book is banned what do they want to do they want to read it yeah they're and they find it and now with the internet of course you can find anything uh yeah. so if you want to read of mice and men you know despite the fact that it's banned uh you know you have access to it right mm. good point yeah it's the same thing with prayer it's one of the reasons why i'm worried about praying for people when they know i'm praying for them because Scientifically, we've actually shown that there's a backfire effect there too, and yes, that it's actually exactly. worse off for them to pray for people. So, yeah. like, <laughs> without explaining all that yeah. science, I'll just I'm be like, I don't with that pray. Study. Yeah, yeah, and that yeah. was and that was a big cohort. That that was like ten thousand people or something. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely, it's interesting. So, yeah, yeah, banning books only tends to make them more notorious, and that's your own secret advertising. But I would say, if you are yeah. getting publicly funded, then you don't have the privilege. You shouldn't have the privilege to ban. And if you're a private, if you're a publicly funded institution like a school institution, you can't say, "Oh, well, we're not going to teach books that don't teach evolution." It's like, no, you have a you have an obligation to do so. This is in the public forum. Well, what about Christian science now? Now that's the part where, in my opinion, I feel like there's no place for religion in a science class. And it's right. like, if you want to teach, if you want to teach religion, open up a religious class and then have a textbook for them in that class where it's all but, about religion. That's what churches are for. Right, right, right. But if you're going to have a biology class, you got to teach biology, right? Yeah. That's that would be my my only opinion as a as a yeah. scientist. There's no there's no controversy to teach. Yeah, there's no controversy there. I, I we'd like to imagine there's controversy in everything, but there really isn't in that case. Uh we have like four more questions, but we are out of time. Larry. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there was want- one more one other comment that I somebody posed to me this week on Facebook. Oh, I got a question for you, but go for it. Go for it. But go ahead. No, go ahead. Larry, you can't prove God doesn't exist. I can't prove that leprechauns don't exist. They're fairies. Are you going to believe in them? I mean, where are you going to stop? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The question, the question I I got was, uh, I mean, on the internet was, should we allow teachers to teach their kids about God? And of course, my answer was, which God? You know, we have all kinds of different religions in school. And if you give one God some time, you're going to have to give all the gods some time. And then it becomes a major waste of time. Correct. And, and, you know, if if you want to teach them about God, do it in your home. Yeah. I mean, that's a place for it or your church, Great. not in school where the point is education. I'm totally for that. In fact, I would say I'd be more willing to have creator gods mentioned in, in, uh, biology books if you're just willing mm-hmm. to refer to every 50,000 god claims and say yep. well Zeus did it this way Ra did it that way uh-huh. Amos yeah, how did much, it this way 
paper yeah, are right. you wasting? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just book? make it just make every biology book like this big, you know, just yeah. like add an extra dictionary and just be like, and these are all the if you do it evenly, think of the good. trees. But if yeah, yeah, think of the sun god, think of this guy, but don't just pick your one Christian god and put that above all other gods and sneak that into our book. That's unforgivable. You can't do I meant trees and pages. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. all those pages wasted. <laughs> do them all or don't do them all at all. That would be my thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The biology book that has all gods mentioned as a creator would be literally as thick as my arm, or even bigger. Right. Anyway, right. uh, we're at the end of the show. Uh, Dread, do you have anything you would like to plug for? We should check. Uh, out yeah, just my YouTube channel. Uh, my latest uh, creation was on the implements of joy. Those Ooh. being the fork and the spoon for eating spaghetti. Nice. Uh, <laughs> I I post these uh, short vignettes uh, under five minutes. On my YouTube channel, Mind Pirate, M I N D P Y R A T E. Come check I watch it out. Them. Yeah, yeah. I watch them. I'm a yeah, fan. You do. Yeah, and I appreciate it. So nice. All right. Uh, for me, you can uh, hopefully by next week when we call in, if you're going to check out anything, check me out next week to see if the whole uh, online buying a car system worked. If it did, I'll report right. back. Because it should be here this Monday, and we'll see if it's in one piece. If I if I got completely tricked, and it's just a hamster in a wheel being like, "No, this is what you bought. This is what you bought. You bought a hamster in a wheel." Right? I was like, "No, I didn't buy a hamster in the wheel." Anyway, that's my uh, my three cents. Check me out next week, Larry. What do you got? Well, my content can be found at digitalfreethought.com. Be sure to click on the blog button for our radio show archives, atheist songs, and many articles on the subject of atheism. Um, you can find my book, Atheism, What's It All About, on Amazon. Remember, everybody is going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life. And we'll see you next Wednesday night at 7 o'clock here on WOZO Radio. Say bye, everybody. Bye, bye everybody. And that's a wrap. Good show, good show well, everybody. Good, show. good rap.